This is Saurabh, and you're listening to my favorite talk show, The BG Show with Aditya. This is episode 211 on the 22nd of May 2020. since childhood especially in moral science and in political science or civics lesson we have often heard this term humans are social animals if we look at it etymologically it is contradictory how can one be social and yet animal if the definition of animal for us over the past thousand years has been to be a barbarian and uncivilized so what do we actually mean by humans are social animals that humans are social barbarians and social uncouths that's what the ideal definition of humans could be one thing that is common between humans and animals and birds is that they communicate they have their own way of communication but one thing that gets all these species together whether it is the human species the flesh and blood or they are the birds the animals and other such species one thing they have in common is that they communicate through some or the other means but what has made humans different in this communication is that humans have always used some external form of communication to get their message across even if humans are the only species who can talk properly and not make noises like birds and animals so this is for a different discussion humans since time in memorial have always used an external form of communication to help them communicate be it the use of birds to send letters way back a thousand years ago which we have heard so often in our mythologies or such stories or in the beginning of time or as the definition of technology progress for human kind we have added all kinds of external methods of communication which we often call as technology in my previous episode i talked about email etiquettes and email as a form of communication versus informal and languid digital media which is basically one form of written communication but in this special episode we are going to talk about one form of communication one device which has transcended times which has been part of the human history for so long that today we tend to take it casually most of my millennial and gen z listeners would see this device as now a vintage and an obsolete form of communication because the subscriptions for the mobile phones have risen over the past decade form of communication because for them they have found more easier form of a device to communicate and we all know what this device is which we shall discuss as this episode progresses in the contemporary world of mobile phones and similar wireless devices one may tend to think that the period of landlines is over but that is a miss conception just as computers and laptops will forever remain indebted to the typewriter the fixed landline supersedes the mobile phone in many minute aspects without attaching the unnecessary nostalgia 
for most individuals the first thought is that the landline that is the instrument is an expensive device to maintain but that is once again a misconception unlike the mobile phone which has to be charged in terms of charging for the data charging for its battery the landline phone that is the fixed telephone that device doesn't need to be maintained all you have to do is attach it to a wire which should go through the walls of your house and it should connect to an external telephone pole outside which is the only thing that needs to be maintained but apart from that that landline phone doesn't have to be maintained in the traditional definition of maintenance landlines or fixed line phones will remain in vogue irrespective of how communication progresses in the next 10 to 15 years so with the advent of video conferencing one has seen that the definition of a voice call is changing rapidly using these video conferencing applications both voice calls and video calls can be made at a cost which is beneficial to every one yet despite these video conferencing applications they still have a couple of disadvantages so for example i have to call my colleague to set up a meeting to decide what will be the agenda of the actual meeting i have to message them that i am setting up a call this is the link to that call and since this video conferencing app relies heavily on our broadband connection that can play an important role if the call doesn't get through or if the call is constantly dropping so yes while these video conferencing applications on your phones and on the computers have that advantage one doesn't need to complicate our life by creating a link every time we need to call a colleague or a friend to set up a meeting let's understand this in detail the fear of being hacked where personal and sensitive data that is cyber threats is displayed publicly makes the note worthiness of fixed line phones even more crucial for the simple fact that they cannot be hacked network problems will rarely occur and when we don't have access to phones due to the fears which makes every human every citizen paranoid with the definition of privacy changing every day and every minute they come to our rescue but still there will be a group who will say that since we are like nomads means we may be shifting cities and going from one place to other for our jobs and other requirements why do we take the burden of subscribing and installing a landline phone where most individuals are not citizens of one city for a particular time they always shift due to personal or professional reasons and mobile phone being the cellular device comes to their rescue because they can carry it forward to any city with roaming charges no longer a factor as far as mobile communication is concerned the fact that humans use whatsapp as a source of text and calling shows their miserly nature that they don't want to spend one pesa on making a call yes it's a factor that this ubiquitous whatsapp or the internet call won't work without having some kind of internet and broadband connection but the point is we don't pay for the calls eventually it's free and irrespective of which part of the world human reside in they always want to go for the freebies that we have to eventually cancel it 
when we shift yes that is an understanding that is a possibility but still in the realm of things landline phones are always going to be an important part of telecommunications compared to the mobile phones let me give you an example for example you are in the marketplace and you are constantly texting with your friend you don't have access to your charger means there are no electric points and you are not carrying a bag all you have with you is your mobile phone in your pocket and your wallet in your other pocket and there is always the question of the mobile phone running out of battery how many times have we heard my mobile phone is running low on battery and therefore i cannot talk further that is something which has always irked human beings ever since this mobile phone was invented it came into existence it became an important part of telecommunications this is where the landline phones would come to our rescue so wouldn't it be prudent if in the marketplaces there are at least a few public telephone booths that is the fixed landline booths unless they invent a mobile phone which never runs out of battery or which depends on other factors to be charged other than charging it with an electric battery every couple of hours the way individuals charge at mobile phone i have seen individuals charge their mobile phone even if the battery is at 60% first we continuously use the mobile phone to send texts or send photos and use the data to check things on the internet and then when we see that it's running low on battery we give an excuse to the person we are texting with that i have to go because my phone is running low on battery and this is where landlines will always come to one's rescue yes landlines will never have this issue you may have heard me reiterate this a hundred times but in my experience landlines have never given me a problem how many times there have been network problems in your house in your workplace in other places where you have to go to another room to start searching for the network sometimes the network exists sometimes the network just disappears you have to wait for a couple of minutes yes we have to be patient enough to wait for the network but if you are on an important call what then for example in the subway for example the metros the subways the metro the transportation call metro we use sometimes networks are not available so according to me it would be prudent if the metro authorities or the department which is responsible for the maintenance of trains the platforms and the train station as a whole they install a couple of public telephone booths it would add to the revenue of the authority and i am not just saying that it helps the authority if your mobile runs out of battery or data the way we use the data like greedy animals it could run out of data in a matter of minutes wifi may not work because what if a thousand people are using the same wifi network and we know administrations do not give unlimited wifi they give limited wifi for a limited period of time so this is where according to me landlines once again come to your rescue let's take part b of this conversation we all know over the past 7 to 8 weeks work from home is becoming a reality is becoming an important part of an individual's work means you work from home 
then using landlines becomes even more important. When we are on the landline, we are not distracted by text messages or checking the internet in, in the garb of doing work. I think in this whole realm of discussion about work from home, which is becoming a reality and as individuals adjust to this or individuals who are already in this process of working from home, for me, for them, landlines will become an important part of telecommunications because their mobile phones will run out of battery. That way you can separate the mobile phone and the landline as different forms of communication means one can use the cellular phones for personal communication that is texting or calling your friends. But when it comes to calling your superiors or your bosses, you use the landline to call them and that way your phone battery will be preserved. But will such things happen is something that remains to be seen. Let's take this discussion further. Unless we have a cordless phone which uses a battery, the fixed landline is not handicapped by having to charge it incessantly compared to the mobiles where the use of multiple apps means charging the phone multiple times in a day. In airplanes, there is the clause of putting the phone on the airplane mode. But next to a seat, there is an option to make a call through a fixed satellite phone by paying a respective fee. Compared to the mobile phones, landlines don't need a SIM card to operate. All they need is a wire and most of the time unless we are so careless that wire won't disconnect and the landline connection will continue to be an important part of the 21st century telecommunication. I have known individuals who forward their mobile to their landline number which means they can keep the landline in their bags or in their drawers not to be disturbed all the time and yet it keeps the communication flowing. Let's look at this example. If schools and universities want to restrict the use of mobile phones by the staff and the students, especially those living in dorms or hostels, then Public booths should be installed in case of emergency or students should be allowed to use landlines in the office during exigent situations without it becoming a nuisance. The only disadvantage of this landline is that it doesn't offer high speed internet service to providers and we are so obsessed with looking everything on this internet that if we don't look at this for a couple of minutes, it shakes us to the very core. And of course, the then of course the impression that there is a steep decline in landline phone business. But even this steep decline is relative. In fact, landline phones can be compared to having a wristwatch. Why does an individual need a wristwatch? when the time is shown on your cell phone but that is the biggest difference to check the time especially if we are in a marketplace we need to stand stop take out the cell phone check the time keep it back again which includes this human habit of looking down at the phone and walking compared to the wrist watch which is there how many times have we heard accidents occurring when we see individuals look down on their mobile phones and walk often bumping into other jaywalking, getting into accidents, texting and driving. Where has the cell phone ever had the advantage apart from having a high speed internet service? 
This human habit of assigning everything as vintage or modern or traditional, be it in terms of devices or be it in terms of newspapers, that is the physical newspapers versus its digital version, this habit needs to go. This habit in one word is now obsolete. It's why do we need to club devices or any other such services which are important for human communication into such categories? What are we trying to prove? I do not agree with such categories, but since these categories have been collated and accepted by a majority and we know where the majority accepts things that particular service or that particular device often wins and that is one of the reasons mobile phones or cell phones are winning the race over the landline phone because of this very factor that it's easy to use it's lazy in terms of being used but the disadvantage is that if I leave my mobile phone on my desk, it may get discharged the next morning. And of course, there is always the question of those blue rays emitting from the mobile phone. How many times have we heard or have you read in magazines and newspapers that children can get affected by the rays emitted by these cellular phone devices and then this habit of sitting on your bed and texting all night or talking to individuals all night i do not see this as a modern day individual i see this as a lazy individual It's time to take a short break, more to follow next. Welcome back after the break. So let's get to a different topic. What was the history of this landline phone or this fixed line telecommunication device? How did it emerge? What is the story behind it? Let's get into this now because the history is very interesting. Start with this statement. Today we take telephones that is the landline phones for granted. Everybody has access to some form of telecommunications, be it a mobile phone or a fixed line phone. But it was a huge deal over a hundred years ago. It was an impossible form of technology which was invented and it had become a big deal. We know that everybody has access to a mobile phone, be it the flip phones, what we call the non-smartphone that is the feature phones versus the smartphones but that is a debate for another day alexander graham bell invented the telephone in the 1880s but bell didn't invent this device out of thin air early telephones had started being developed as early as 1660s in the 21st and the 22nd century these Fixed line telephones are seen as primitive compared to the cellular phones. Early telephones are more accurately called mechanical acoustic devices. Instead of transforming audio energy into electrical energy, these devices simply transmitted voice data mechanically like through pipes and other media. Using these basic devices, users could transmit speech and music over distances greater than you would be able to transmit if you were speaking or yelling. One of the best known examples of this technology is called the tin can 
telephone. It's the same types of phones we created in schools when we were younger. We connected two tin cans using a string or a wire. The mechanical vibration from our voice traveled down the wire before being converted back into sound energy at the end of the line. British physicist Robert Hooke was credited as the first person to invent one of these devices. Between 1664 and 1685, Hooke conducted numerous experiments with these devices. The first telephone-like device, an acoustic string phone, is credited to him in 1667. Let's move on to the 1700s. In 1753, one Scottish scientist named Charles Morrison proposed an important theory. You could transmit messages through electricity by using different wires for each letter. Morrison is credited as the first person to theorize that an electric telegraph could exist. So it was Samuel Morse who invented the Morse code. But we will talk about the Morse code in a separate episode. So now let's talk about electric telegraphs before we talk about electric telephones. Then came a challenge. Mechanical devices faced some obvious restrictions. You couldn't transmit sound over long distances. The sound didn't come out perfectly. You couldn't transmit through certain media and you needed to be physically connected to the other telephone. What was the better way? Starting in the 1800s, inventors like Francisco Salva Compilo and Alexander Graham Bell started trying to develop electrical telephones. These electrical telephones sought to combine the audio transmission technology of mechanical acoustic devices with the long distance electrical data transmission of the electrical telegraph. First, let's talk about the electric telegraph. In 1804, Catalan scientist and inventor Francisco Salva Compilo created an electrico-mechanical telegraph. In 1832, Baron Schilling improved upon the device. Two German inventors created their own electromagnetic telegraph in 1833. The first working electric telegraph wasn't put into place until April 1839 when it was constructed on the Great Western Railway in England. Now we talk about something that we all have been wanting to hear. In 1837, Samuel Morse independently developed his own electrical telegraph and patented the invention in America. His assistant Alfred Whale created a Morse code signaling alphabet that could be used to transmit messages electronically. By 1838, Morse had sent America's first telegram. You have to understand that both the telephone and the telegraph are wire-based electrical systems. Telegraph also paved the way for later telephone inventors. As About.com explains, Alexander Graham Bell's success with the telephone came as a direct result of his attempts to improve the telegraph. Telegraph till then had been used as an established means of communication for nearly three decades. But then every new invention comes because the previous invention has its limitation. So let's understand how was the telegraph a limited system or a limited form of communication. Alexander Graham Bell improved upon the telegraph 
telegraph was only popular because it was the only way to transmit messages over long distances at this point in time remember these are the 1800s the 19th centuries some of my listeners would not even believe that it took such an effort to invent or improve upon the audio communication devices the two biggest problems with the telegraph were its dot and dash morse code system which limited the device to only receiving and sending one message at a time as well its reliance on physical lines a break anywhere in the line including in undersea intercontinental cables would disable the system telegraphs were also limited by the reliance on repeaters which needed to be placed along the telegraph line to ensure the signal could reach long distances repeaters weren't just automatic relay stations they were stations where a technician had to receive the signal then we transmit that signal down the line now my question is the first question that comes to our mind who invented the telephone we would probably say alexander graham bell just as we would say edison invented electricity according to this website there were six different inventors working on electrical telephone around this time with high levels of success according to a website the early history of the telephone became and still remains a confusing morass of claims and counter claims let's look at the six inventors who are credited with inventing some type of electronical telephony device they include alexander graham bell bell received the first us patent for the invention of the telephone in 1876 bell used his own musical or harmony approach as a practical solution to the telegraph's problem bell's harmonic telegraph was based on the idea that several notes could be sent along the way simultaneously as long as the notes or signals had different pitches and the next inventor is thomas edison edison is credited with inventing the carbon microphone which produced a strong telephone signal antonio muci in 1854 he constructed telephone like devices johann philip rice it in 1860 rice constructed rice telephones but stopped just short of making these telephones practical working devices next inventor is elisha gray in 1876 gray used a water microphone to create a telephone in highland park illinois Gray and Bell developed their inventions simultaneously and independently and these two had a legal battle over who actually invented the telephone then something very important Tevedar Puskas this Hungarian invented the telephone switchboard exchange in 1876 Now we need to understand that out of these inventors Bell and Gray are credited to creating what we know as the modern working telephone. We will talk about more about Alexander Graham Bell and how he has the credit and the patent with inventing the first telephone company but that will come at a later point in time. Now my listeners must be interested to know what are the various types of telephones there have been a few major types of telephones including rotary dialing phones candlestick phones touch tones and cordless phones the first is the tap dialing and the rotary dialing the first rotary dial was invented in 1896 prior to that telephone owners would have to push a button on the telephone 
the required number of pulses by tapping in order to call a number. Understandably, the rotary dial was seen as a superior alternative to this system. By 1943, the last button tapping telephone had been phased out. The next type of phone is the candlestick phone and I am sure those who have seen movies in the 1970s and the 80s will remember this kind of telephone. Candlestick phones were popularized throughout the 1890s to the 1930s. The candlestick phone was separated into two pieces, a mouthpiece that stood upright that is the candlestick and a receiver which was placed in your ear when you were placing a phone call. By the 1930s, these types of phones had phased out of fashion as phone manufacturers started combining the mouthpiece and the receiver into a single unit, a trend that continues to the modern day. Touch Tone Phones The first Touch tone phone was invented in 1941. These phones used tones in the voice frequency range, much different from the pulses generated by rotary dials. You press the buttons on the phone to make a phone call. Now let's get to another type of a telephone, the cordless phones. Cordless phone started to hit the market in the 1970s. In 1986, the FTC, that is the, that is the Federal Telecom Commission, had released the frequency range between 47 and 49 megahertz for use by cordless phones. This wider frequency range meant phones could work wirelessly with less interference and less power required in order to run. As cordless phones became more and more popular, the FTC would eventually grant more and more frequency range to cordless phones over the years. In 1990, cordless phones received the frequency range of 900 megahertz. In 94 and 95, Digital Broad Spectrum, that is the DSS, was introduced along with digital cordless phones. Digital technologies enhance the security of cordless phones. Instead of messages being transmitted unencrypted through the air, digital technology allowed for greater protection and less unwanted eaves dropping. In 1998, the FCC, that is the Federal Communication Commission, granted the frequency range of 2.4 gigahertz to cordless phones. In 2003, the FCC bumped the upper limit of the frequency range to 5.8 gigahertz. Now I want to talk about something rather unique. Those who have watched the Star Trek TV shows, that is the original series, which had William Shatner, D. Forrest Kelly, and Leonard Nimoy as the major characters playing Kirk, Bones, and Spock, respectively. If you have looked carefully at the TV show and if you have gone beyond the ubiquitous nature of the show being only science fiction it offers us a lot but let's look at the tv show from the point of view of telephone technology if you look at the characters they have this communicator device the flip phone through which they communicate it has something to do with communicating through radio technology it is used like a wireless device same devices Police and armed forces used to communicate where you don't have to punch in numbers but you communicate through a satellite range or through different frequencies. And this is one of the first TV shows to even show a semblance of 
what a mobile phone could have looked like. There is a separate history as to how mobile phones came into being, how mobile phones have taken over the world like a storm over the past three decades. How like landlines, mobile phones, nature has also changed. First, we had the from the phones which needed an antenna to be talked to, switching on to the flip phones, then the bigger, bulkier phones that we have today, which we often call the smartphones, which use wireless technology and radio technology to communicate, adding it to the data and the broadband internet. But despite all this, why did I talk about landlines? Landlines have always had an advantage over wireless technology, over cellular phones. The data or the voice or the communication may be transmitted using wires, but still it has that going beyond the obvious part of it being a vintage device or it having some form of nostalgia. It is still a piece of technology that transcends the cellular phone despite the many advantages of the cell phone. What were they? I had already talked about them. And if you have something to add that why do you think landline phones are now part of the vintage world? and the cellular phones are the past, present and the future and the cell phones are better in terms of voice technology than the landline phones, please send me a message and I will relay it on my talk show. This ends episode number 211 on the 22nd of May 2020. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. It's goodbye and good night from the studios of Aditya Digital Network. For more awesome content, tune in to the next episode of the weekly show with Aditya.